think is the wild card for me, right? Like all these Romanian players, I feel like they've been in this like tier two, tier three area for such a long time, but haven't really popped off as a team because they've always been in the same team, Prepare right? There's there's a battle. reason why like, uh, take for example, CSGO. I had no faith in the Finnish oh, rosters yeah, go because on. it's a full Finnish team and they never made it work since 2019, the one time. It's kind of like in Dota as well. Now that they're split on other ends, like is this gonna amplify Blink's capability as a pause for? How does he sit together with Mu? Has he kind of locked in his place now because Moo's not a player who builds blink dagger a lot right now he's playing a hero that feels like kind of has to build blink dagger he had uh he had lelis before who was the one who always built the blink dagger as a pause for initiate for him he could play these more farmer uh, farmier greedier offlane heroes that just either dish out dish out damage they do rat dota uh hit objectives and not necessarily like super on uh, team fight. So Blink is uh, playing a little bit different here with this Vengeful Spirit. You kind of got your Nether Swap, which kind of works as a Blink Dagger, I guess you could put it that way. And of course, it's not like Moo never builds Blink. It's just that his four has always done it for him. Yeah, I mean, obviously in this game, in any game with Enigma, you'll eventually get Blink. But the Vlads is a uh, item that's gone up in uh, stocks significantly yep. and it is oh. a perfect hero to build up the Vlads on. Vlads plus uh, probably a couple of other Auras in this case. You get a couple of defensives, maybe uh, Yule's, I wouldn't know exactly who, but someone could get a Yule Scepter. It's very good against both the Spirit Breaker and the Ursa, kind of. Yep denies them uh, completely during the team fight so hopefully someone can be able to purchase it maybe blink it's not necessarily an item you expect too much on a vengeful spirit though yep and and also like itemization wise i was kind of looking at this uh how do you counter the ursa usually your your traditional answer would be like let's build mass yules or at least one or two yules there's no real yules builder uh, in, in Bamisoy's draft right now. So they're gonna, they basically have picked their heroes accordingly to fight up against this Ursa. Even though this, the Ursa coming so late into the draft, it's like, all right, we're just gonna have to adapt. Uh, we can't really itemize, it, itemize against them, but we've got the heroes that are capable of finding workarounds uh, against it. Well, we'll see how that's a... gonna happen. Um, but we have three different lanes and T-Panda. For you, the question, where should I keep my camera most focused to? What are we looking at the most? I mean, mid lane is just going to be a bit of a basic uh, grind and halt, basically, just between the two. Uh, you want to look at, like, the support rotations pretty early on, because getting that uh, pre-6 gank on Storm, if that happens, is very good. Though, these days, Storms do tend to get that level 6 before uh, the uh, the power runes are spawning, so probably not looking at mid at all. I'd maybe keep an eye open on this top lane a little bit. Like, can Avenge and Enigma find a Grimstroke off guard for a moment? Also, the Ursa packs a big punch and damage. Like, their stuns are somewhat limited, but they're good enough uh, to keep the Ursa at bay. So I'd look at top lane mostly for battling. Maybe bottom lane, the, the safe lane Ember is a bit intriguing. Uh, Husky doesn't really misposition himself too many times. He's actually doing a good job bullying Ezekiel the whole time. The Spirit Breaker is barely getting any CS in this lane. And Samson's got the uh, Burn of Shadows marked up. I'm uh, curious to see what kind of gameplay he's gonna throw out. Of course, Ember Spirit. When I think safe lane Ember Spirit, I think good old EE -E Daedalus Battle Fury oh, no. Ember Spirit. Oh, no. But no one does that. <laughs> Let's not go there. <laughs> I miss All it, the days. though. It's so greedy. I'm, I'm curious to see how he's going to build. Is he going to go for the... Uh, I mean, you kind of have to, especially against this dire lineup, get yourselves a Mage Slayer, right? Yeah, Mage Slayer is in a, an amazing place right now. That'd definitely be a good item choice to look at. Like, you go face boots, earn, uh, pick up the Mage Slayer at some stage fairly early on as well into the game. The stats are so good. The the reduction against the Storm Spirit that is literally no Bounty Hunter's big playmaker early on in the game. You get that debuff to connect onto the Storm. Muzi feels like, man, I'm, I'm not doing anything with this hero and I'm supposed to be making all the plays. So oh, they're gonna try no and husky. Yeah, he's got the 
Buddha Restoration constantly pumping out fairy fires available as well. It's not easy to kill off this witch doctor. At least they're trying to keep up the pressure the whole time, like forcing him to burn a lot of mana. He's slowly, slowly draining down, like he hasn't even leveled up his cask at all. It's just the sustain in the lane, recognizing that Pugna is going to be poking a lot, and his job is to keep that Spirit Breaker at bay. But now Ezekiel can actually lane a bit better. And they're not really looking for kills on the side of uh, Bamisoy in this bottom lane, just to kind of out-trade your opponents, because they know they're getting hit a lot. You know what's a bit disappointing is that they're... Top lane. Oh. Oh, yeah. Got a first blood. Trouble, and that is indeed first blood being secured. Michael in trouble as well. The Eidolons can do a little bit more damage. Mu trying to Radiance get underneath the tower. Needs to be killed. careful himself of any possible Radiance rotations, but the storm attack. is not coming through. Michael? Ooh, no Malefice for Mu to be used, so he'll be able to stay alive at the very least. But that is First Blood being secured for Bamisoy. I was just going to talk about the fact that they still have the uh, the old Bamisoy logo in the top of the screen. That is absolutely horrid to look at. While they have a new logo already made. Big fight in bottom. He dropped the low. They not knew he was going to die. Let death become peace. Yeah, you got the Maledictory uh, on top of you. Like, th this is this is a game where you have both Malefice and Maledict. So, uh, you know, nice tongue twisters for you in team fights. Um, but it, it's it's the right call, right? Like, the moment you have your uh, Maledict already connected, Sammy's gonna try and keep up the pump. You've got this Flame Guard constantly doing tick damage. You have no real way of recovering once that is connected. It's like you are gonna take a hefty amount of damage because the sustain is too great. Oh, is really just destroying that mid lane. Uh, fairly enough. He's, it's, it's not a huge advantage, but it's it's good enough. Because he could just dive Muzi here. It's pretty good. Like, he didn't get his level 6, you know? We talked about that level 6 before the 6 minute rune. He doesn't need it. He solos the game. Though. Top lane, Khan trying to get the kill onto Blink. And dip out immediately afterwards. Should be able to disengage. Has his boots already done. So one for one trade. A bit of uh, revenge there for Khan. He's very poor in CS though. This is this lane has been abysmal uh, for no bounty hunter. This Ursa has barely any farms, so now he's going to get up these kills. Oh, will Khan be able to finish him off? He does get the kill. He dies afterwards, but at least gets the experience associated with that kill, which is uh, something. And considering Blink TP towards mid, you get a full regen on to the Ursa, which is a pretty nice movie drop in low. Luckily enough, is level 6. God, that Timber Saw damage. He, yeah, max level Whirling Death. He is not going to give your opponent a chance here. This is the beauty of having such a powerful flex. And they've, they've basically set their game plan straight with that, too. Like, when they, they got this draft already kind of going their way, they got that Storm Spirit answer early. But the way the game has been rolling, like, no Bounty Hunter, they, they're locked in on both of these lanes. You can't leave the Spirit Breaker alone. You can't really leave the Ursa alone, because he's just going to get bullied the whole time versus two ranged heroes. And it leaves Storm all by himself. Like, if Mobi uh, Mobi gets himself a bit of an advantage, like we just saw them killing Muzi again, uh, Storm, he, he's like, I'm not getting help anywhere for my team. And there's, uh, they don't really have the supports to help. Uh, Pugna can't do anything at this stage. That too, yeah. Grimstroke, I mean, Phantom's Embrace is pretty nice to throw on a Timbersaw, especially if he's used Chakram, because he can't pull it in and he can't right-click at that point. But it is uh, not the easiest thing to do if you're going to get hunted down. The Grimstroke drops. There's also a level 6 on the Enigma, so you have to be very careful now if you want to continue. Just dive this guy right under the tower. I mean, you can poke this timber saw, but it's just not going to be enough. Yeah, that's just a very straightforward walk into your face black hole. Easy kill. Another death on that storm. No TP available either. He's even marked up that he needs a soul ring. He's just, he's got nothing. And Ursa has to ditch this top lane completely. The tower's gonna fall very soon. You've won both your side lanes. You're winning mid right now on Bamisoy. 
Ezekiel on the Spirit Breaker gets hit by Maldic. Moba picked up a regen room while he was very low in the meantime. We'll be able to get the full regen, but luckily enough, they do have Decrepify plus uh, Phantom's Embrace, and there is nothing you can do when you get hit by the double combo. Yeah, you found the enemy. Uh, you've got three heroes on top of you. Uh, almost killed the Spirit Breaker, Dyer's not quite enough uh, with that level attack. 2 Maledict. The guy just got Dyer's himself just enough regeneration to just kind of out outdo the tick damage. But uh, while that was happening, Mu takes the top tower on this Enigma. He's opened up this top half of the map completely. They've already got some deep wards placed down inside the, uh, the edge of the Dire Jungle. And you're just claiming control over the map. And Sammy Boy is just like, well, I mean, I can just farm up my items right now. I'm not in real trouble. Sammy Boy, he's uh, also got his level 6, so very elusive. Does need to definitely be careful if he doesn't get hit by the Phantom's Embrace, the Crapify combination, that he does spot out that the Pugna is nearby, but might not know where Michael is currently. Might be baiting here. Or maybe even get baited in. Gotta be careful in that box. Yeah, we game. never know about Sammy Boy. <laughs> he can fall prey to both of them. Oh, does get hit by the Silence. There's also the Decrepify hold him down, Sammy Boy taken down, Timbersaw TPing in, Moba is here, he's ready to play, got to tip out immediately. And that's exactly what they're trying, moozy has got no mana left, they not. Yeah, th this Timber is just dismantling this game. He's, he went for Blink Dagger first, I think. Like, it's not even there yet, but that's uh, showing exactly how confident he is. He knows if he's got a blink, he's going to be on top of anyone, and no one can run away. I mean, if you look at net worth, this is like a disgustingly strong timber saw. He's at 6.7k when the next core from No Bounty Hunter that's supposed to counter him, the Ursa, is at 3.8. And he had a hard lane. He, uh, you have the Storm Spirit that lost to the timber saw. And then you look at the the Spirit Breaker that was being zoned out in the early levels in the laning stage by a Witch Doctor. It's like, where is your recovery mechanism coming from when the opponent is ready to just go full off? The ones that are doing a pretty good job are the two supports, which work very well in tandem with their spells. Especially once Soulbind comes into play, they can pretty much get uh, <laughs> two kills on anyone that they encounter if they get the catch. Yeah, it's like you kind of gotta try and get these kills on this ember spirit like it feels like he's the the big target you can still kill at this stage of the game you're not killing this timber saw not even with five heroes like mobile is just way too damn strong and you said that first item blink that he built up he's like he's just feeling himself he's on a bit of a power fantasy here doing whatever he wants maybe he overextends and that could be something that no bounty hunter can use to punish I mean, to be fair, you did mention Mu doesn't like to go for Blink, so Mobi has to. So, yeah. it's the trade-off. It's it's you play with Mu. It's the sacrifice you have to be making. Yeah, you just have to do it. Athena, being chased by Blink, he wants to get the swap in, but well, Khan's also far. dying on top. Can't lose the Ursa here. Uh, there's a oh, he black hole right behind him in case he wants to continue the TP, but it's uh, not gonna happen. Lane, the they find the kill on Ezekiel. There's the soul bind onto two electric vortex. They have the damage to take down the Ember Spirit. Black Hole is at the ready. They don't even get close to killing off Samson. Who's gonna dive underneath the tower? The two supports are the last two standing. Black Hole, ah, why not? Might as well use it at this stage. Michael will be uh, just walking back to safety. But it is looking a fairly one sided right now. Yeah, it's a bit of a welcome to North America by uh, by Bami Soy and the boys. I mean, they they basically killed off the Ursa in the top lane, who was trying to teleport out. Then he sees the Enigmas coming in. He's like, oh, well, what can I do here? Uh, they get the Ursa kill, and they also get to rotate in bottom just in time before their supports are getting obliterated by the, the Soulbind combo. It's basically just lost one hero, took four, and you're still in complete control. That was such a big fight for a no bounty hunter to win and they weren't able to get anything done with it. So th this game is sliding out of their hands very fast. Uh, Dana gets swapped back in a bit of trouble, but there's Mobi coming through really absolutely, as you mentioned, on a power fantasy. Hasn't even given, this was his first assist that he gave away. 9-0-1 on the Timbersaw, level 30 Timbersaw. And uh, really making uh, his mark here for the Bamisoy squad. 
And they're just celebrating all over. Like, they're not really getting challenged at all by no bounty hunter. Uh, with the way, if you lose three lanes, this is basically what you're looking at right now. And even an Enigma, just chilling in the front line with the rest of his squad, doesn't need to go back in jungle, use Black Hole, then go back to jungle. No, it's like Moose just chilling around with his team. You've talked about the Vlads, you've got the Aura buff for your team. You have this Timber Saw that can do whatever he wants. He's got his Blink Dagger going around on targets. And Sammy Boy, kind of elusive too. Oh, they actually got a gank going on top. Sammy Boy is probably the best target you can go for, but you do need to lock him down. He had a fire room on the other side of the map. They will quickly get rid of Thayna. That's beyond godlike now for Mobile. The tier 2 tower is going to be the target. That's also one of the important factors of that last pick, Enigma. And with the item build he's going for, they needed push. They had zero push in their lineup, and all of a sudden the Enigma comes in and you can melt buildings, especially... Yeah, he's going for the Boots of Bearing next. He's got the Helm of the Dominator, Vlad's. It's all Auras. Blink Dagger is all for Auras. suckers. Exactly. What else do you want at this point? You just want these early buffs shared by your entire team. You're on a steamroll. Uh, and, and, yeah, exactly like what you said, they don't really have any objective-based damage. They don't really hit towers. Those Auras do help out a little bit. Uh, you've got the level 4 Eidolons that are probably your best Punching, uh, well, not punching back. Oh, Moozy. Oh, the coconut chasing him, but he waits half a second so that it at least connects and gets all the way back to base in time. Top lane, blink is going to be the target here. The bashes are they going to be enough damage? So nope, there's not going to be enough damage. Not even close. Yeah, the way is too long. I'm baffled that he doesn't have a bots right now. Blink hole, a black hole in mid. Moozy. That was close. Yeah, that was too close to comfort for Muzi. He already dodged the second gank attempt inside 30 seconds. Bamisoy, like... They didn't really feel threatened by the Vengeful Spirit getting ganked in front of their own Tier 1 tower. That's off. They can teleport and rotate for a quick kill. Dana in a bit of trouble. I completely forgot which Doctor also has an ulti. That it's just... That hero is also in this game. It's a, it's kind of the Mu and MOBA show so far. And Khan is like, can I finish my Battle Fury, guys? I mean, I can get, start like, farming extra... soon. Yeah, I'm, I'm farm online in just a minute. Just, just wait. I will be that big character. Like those Eidolons are gonna drop like flies. Easy. Yeah. How do you hit towers when the Eidolons are dead? Oh, Ezekiel. He's not enjoyed this game at all. Mu does get jumped. Doesn't have a black hole available. Ezekiel did get taken out. In the meantime, Mu can he run away? Turn their attention towards Husky. They find Mu, and Husky might be a second one dropped. Samson with a couple of sleight of fists has that nasty Mage Slayer built up. And in response... He's kind of alone here. Yeah, he is alone. Will Samson die in time before Mobile is there? Yes, indeed. Okay. They find a triple kill. I'm surprised that Sammy Boy was... Trying to man fight against the Ursa. You had these, you had these uh, Bamisoy heroes fighting in bottom, just bullying Ezekiel. No bounty hunter again. It's like, well, we're gonna sack the uh, the Spirit Breaker. We got a decent fight going on on top that we can win to extend this one. And it all, all goes off with the Enigma. No black hole. He's under the tower. He's low HP. You use the Glyph for that extra pumping damage. They're all basically taking big hits, and there's no timber saw. It's like, this is our best fight we can take, where Urs is hitting targets, and the big damage dealer timber isn't there. And uh, they got exactly what they wanted. That was what Khan really needed to get back in this game, because that was like 2,000 net worth for him. Yeah, still uh, quite a decent amount behind, but it is uh, baby steps at this stage. Exactly. You, now let's repeat that five times in a row, and maybe then we're even. Yeah. It's a long road. Dyer are scanning. And the problem is, I mean, you, you, you do definitely, I oh think, scale God. better in the late game, which is the plus. But you need to get there. And that's a, <laughs> that's a challenge in itself. But if you, have the, if you put these heroes against each other at minute 45, same net worth, the no bounty hunter hero should win. Tower 
is under attack. Talking about uh, roads, have you ever tried um, a, an American chocolate dessert called Rocky Road? Oh, Rocky Road is delicious. Stupendous. It is delicious, man. It is so good. I don't know what's in it. Probably everything that's going to kill me, but it is delicious. Yeah, all, all the best things are either illegal or uh, you're suppo not supposed to do them, but Rocky Road is, that's like my top five. I went to California on vacation last summer, and I... Uh, the difference in food is uh, baffling between what we get here and what you get in the US. It's all so much and so good. I'm a sucker for anything. That's just sweet, really. Well, they're a master, master in that. This game is pretty sweet for Bamisoy, too. But no bounty hunter, uh, even with Ursa getting that triple kill for himself in that last team fight, surviving, getting himself a bit closer to the BKB, you're still like a full item behind on almost everybody compared to uh, Bamisoy right now. Like, they have these. You've got the drums already up on the Enigma. Their pushing power has just been amplified with that extra bit. They're still ganking you around the map. Like, the Spirit Breaker doesn't have a game. Uh, it does have his Hand of Midas at least done, so his farming tool is done. They've got the Ursa's farming tool done. They've actually they kept the net worth pretty even, which the longer the game goes, if you keep the net worth even, it's just advantage coming through. Even Dana is just split pushing that bottom lane, forcing these rotations back. Bamisoi are not really taking any objectives because they're hunting for kills around the map. Yeah, they're being split around the map the whole time, Radiant so it's like awesome. none of our waves are never there to really breach that high ground position. And even with that Aegis, it's like, well, we kind of need to look for kills. They're getting some. Dana is very much surrounded. Goes for the TP at probably the saddest moment possible, while in the meantime towards mid, Mobi gets a solo kill onto Michael. Now over here! Yeah, he, now you're... he doesn't care. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, you just killed two heroes, but uh, Spirit Break is already splitting the top lane. Uh, mid's getting pushed out, there's no creep wave. They're like, well, we gotta commit to this bottom lane, guys. Uh, maybe it's enough for us with these pickoffs that this bottom lane is our avenue towards the high ground. Or maybe they're just drawing the Tormentor, like, let's get that out of the way, too. Tormentor is always kill. a bit of a scary one, because that is a game-changing kind of engagement. If they have an Observer Ward there and they spot you out, you lose HP on your heroes, they can very much quickly turn that around. Bam. The rage, TP out, Mobile has no way to interrupt it, but he has a way to interrupt Ezekiel's life. Yeah, I've been chasing Ezekiel from the top lane all the way back to mid, and they still get him killed. Like, <laughs> this is how rough the Spirit Breakers game is. You've got this enemy full of uh, it's relocate. The zip comes in, Black Hole gets used. And he does find the Aww. kill, might lose their lives immediately afterwards as well. There's going to be Sammy Boy joining in the fun. The shard for Michael trying to get the job done, but Mobi joined in a little bit too soon. And they were pretty much lacking, like the storm went in and it was a great catch. The problem is he silenced the wrong one. Yeah. You have the things of eternity. Too many Dolans in your feet. You just get hit by black hole right after. Was it? Yeah, I didn't think that was the right move from him. I mean, you gotta you gotta make these desperation plays anyway. You gotta react really quickly. It's pretty stressful as a player too. Dyer's middle tower. But what can you do? Well, they uh, need to hold on. Luckily enough, the their levels are so low. Their respawns are so quick. No harm comes to their base just yet. And again, no bling dagger being built up on Mu. He's ignoring it completely. Has his uh, boots of bearing. Next item, the helm of the overlord. Mobai still hasn't died. 17, 0, and 4. And because of the TP right in front of him, he is going for a size of scythe fight. He, he realizes I need something to interrupt their TPs. I'm gonna be careful here. You don't wanna use your BKB too early, only just to disengage. You're gonna need to use that offensively. Blink has Axe. That's uh, not bad. Also, yeah, there is a Yules being built up on the Witch Doctor, so they are at least making sure that they still keep some itemization in their minds in case the game does go wrong against the Ursa and Spearbreaker. Yep. 
So some ill news coming for Khan is when this Witch Doctor finishes Yules. Khan wants to play aggressive, doesn't want to use his BKB right away to engage. Get thrown up into the air. It's like, well, he's not really doing much here, is he? Oh, Ezekiel again. Like, this guy's just not catching a break. Like, how how long are they going to bully him? They're just going to try and force Ezekiel to, to make personal GG. Towards mid, they do manage to get a kill. Make that two. Going in for more. Mu has no black hole, but Mobi is ready. Trumbull Khan running away. Has a blink. Going for the TP. Interrupt is on cooldown. So they find two kills. They lost two heroes. Unfortunately, it's two supports for two cores over the map. But nonetheless, every little bit is just an addition to your bank. And it keeps the enemy away from your base. And this is like the fourth time in a row we see the exact same thing happen. Ezekiel is being ganked on the other side of the map. No bounty hunter either smokes or just charges right on top of Bamisoy. And Bamisoy has to fight uh, shorthanded. But they do have these farmed heroes. They've got more items. They've got more damage. But it's again a two for two trade. It's not favorable for no bounty hunter, but those are the openers that they can basically rely on. Oh no. Mobi coming in from the side. Spots out Thayna. Black hole gets used, but quick interrupt comes out. Thayna is dead. They find Mu in response. And actually, they got to be a little bit careful here because the damage output from that Ursa is quite remarkable unless he gets controlled because he didn't have a BKB available anymore. Michael going for the TP out of there. Will they be able to lock him down? No searing chains. All things considered. The downside is they lost Khan, but. You know, Moo gets taken down, Black Hole has been used, and you keep the storm at the very least alive. Yeah, the end result still seems to be pretty much the same. Uh, you got a couple good kills, but you're still losing the guys uh, doing all the killing. And Timbersov, 19-0-5, like, Mobi is just, uh, he's a god right now. How do you kill a god? I'll take that. Well, that's going to be problematic, especially now that he is getting his Scythe of Vice delivered. So he's going to be able to get some lockdown, probably be able to solo kill anyone on the map if he encounters them first. But yeah, indeed, how do you kill a god? I mean, I've seen plenty of movies where they manage to kill a god. There's even an entire game series based on killing a god. Well, yep. it's a god of war killing other gods. you got to be a god to kill other gods. In that game, at least. Yeah, and there's unfortunately no Mars or Zeus in this game, so they're lacking in gods. Or Monkey King, I think technically Sun Wukong is also a god. Can't remember. Maybe the power of religion, you've got this, uh, you know, Indian space cow. <laughs> well, yeah, Maybe to be fair, kill? Spirit Breaker, yeah, close. Radiant's the holy cow. Is under attack. I think technically... Oh, Got that hex. going in, pops his BKB, Mobile quickly getting away, Inkswell comes out, they find a catch on to Husky, blow him up, Soulbind holds him in place, that means Mobile can't get away, he's actually taking a bit of damage, but Muzi is blown to smithereens, Khan doesn't have a BKB available anymore, and it, with the enrage ending, it's in a lot of trouble, the two supports are the only ones dropping Ezekiel, he's going back in, actually he's going back to the other side of the map, while the TP from Michael comes through, it's another 3 for 2 trade, this time they didn't manage to get a single core killed from the Bami Soy side. And again, back to the same thing. Push out the waves. Here comes uh, Mobe. Oh, he's got the hex kill. He's everywhere. Yeah. He's everywhere. But now that you've got four dead, you can finally reach high ground. Get some damage onto these tier threes. Maybe even force out a glyph or two. But you're not getting a lane of Rax, really. Uh, they're going to be up at the time uh, they're even hitting this melee Rax. Because they don't have big building damage. Honestly, they're just Mopai trying to stall them as much shard. as they can. I think that's the only thing that they can do to add all this damage. Oh, you've got the Enigma with his full army. Yeah, that definitely does help. Even as the Ancient Thunder hide there. From the helm of the Overlord. I'll, I'll take my words back. I guess they can take a melee Rax without uh, no Bounty Hunter being... Getting their heroes respawned back in time. Okay, Muzi's item build. Kaya Sanj, Aghanim Scepter. Aghanim Scepter tends to be a game changer. 
I just want to go back to that last team fight because the the amount of tools that No Bounty has are super lacking. It's down to like Grimstroke getting a combination of Soulbind connected onto two. You've got Vision on your opponents. Uh, maybe Spirit Breaker utilizes it somehow. But Muzi needs to find the biggest target available for Khan to blow him up. And that would have been Mobi. He had Khan had his BKB pop so early. Okay, well, actually, we might get a fight here. This could end the game. Oh, Mobi, the first one gets spotted. He gets the hex off. Does get healed up to keep Khan alive? No, they do not. Black Hole gets used. Michael dropping very low, trying to disengage from the fight as well. Soulbind will keep him at bay for a little bit longer, but there is no buyback available for Khan. And well, the creeps are a bit further away than they would like for the push to come through. While top side, is he kill? I just. I mean, I, I find it impressive on that he's going to play game two because I would just be done. <laughs> it would be. If this was a pub, I'd just be like, okay, GG, I'm done for the day, it's over. I can't do anything. Yeah, if, if this was a pub, you'd have to wait one more minute for the GG tap out. <laughs> so you're stuck in this game. It's like, just let me out of here. But, but yeah, like, I, I wanted to talk about that previous team fight where Khan literally just got kited. Uh, he pops his BKB super early on into the fight, Mobi just chains away. And it's like, well, this is where you need to kill somebody, with Ursa being invulnerable for the time being. And that second fight, which we just saw, starts with Ursa being jumped first, blown up. He gets nothing out. And th that's your win condition for a team fight. You lose that right, on, right away in the start of the fight, th there's no fight anymore after that. Look at Ezekiel. He's walking into the pit. They have a sentry ward. Entry. So they know he's there, and immediately ties up to Hey! Roshan with the steal. Oh, that's a, at the very least a plus. Muzi also walked all the way through, trying to scout around the pit. They're actually going for an aggressive fight here. Rosh is about to swap sides to the other side of the world, which puts Muzi in a very awkward spot because he is just in the wrong avenue. Even gets spotted. Mobike gets stunned in the meantime. Muzi! You don't have enough mana to sip all the way home. Is the TP gonna be long no. enough? No, he zips right in front of Blink and Samson. Oh, oh. that's you. In for a oh, penny. The, the desperation really tells everything there, right? Like, uh, if we can slow down this Roshan, maybe steal it somehow. We're throwing, throwing in bodies to try and slow down this pro this uh, process, but it, it wasn't gonna turn into anything pretty. I mean, we kind of already saw what was coming out of that. Oh yeah, luckily enough, the Timbers also gets the Aegis, you know, just in case the 25 and 0 seconds. Because you're holding now, Okan. Sammy boy, very tanky, well, surviving everything so far, but is currently out of mana, and that's the problem. Can he get himself out of stacks. there? Khan, come on, get the target. Oh. Mobi is body blocking. Body blocking. Oh. They're just, yeah, there's the GG goal. That's just style. There we go. Body blocking him as, <laughs> against an Ursa. That's just me. Yeah, like I was looking at Sammy. He's got 17 stacks of Fury Swipes on him. If he gets hit a couple times, that Battle Fury damage could start hurting everybody else except maybe the Timber Saw. But the end result is you're getting body blocked by your enemy Timber. That's not a fun play.